All right, in this video, we are going to be making a flat foreshortened soft slab vase. So we'll be using the soft slab construction technique and we will be making two sides of a vase form, putting it together. It won't be round, it'll kind of be tapered on each end. So what we will need, you're gonna need your work board, you will need some newspaper, you will need a piece of paper folded in half, some scissors and a pin. Again, always good to have a couple of ribs. I got my rusty rib, flexible metal rib, fiddling knife, cutoff wire, modeling stick, uh, two sticks for making the slab uniform, and one of the rolling pins. This is a two inch dowel, um, closet dowel. So that's what we'll be using to do this project. Also, good to have some water and a sponge and a paintbrush so you can use to apply the water. So what we're gonna do to get started first is we're going to design the vase form. And here's some patterns I already did. So here's the vase. And the concept is visualize this piece of paper as one half of the vase. And I know this isn't the same shape, but we're essentially gonna put two of the halves together. And so what we need is we need to fold the paper in half and draw a nice vase shape. When we get to the neck area, we want it thicker than we actually would want it to be because when we do open it up and we do start to taper it, you will see on both sides that the neck will get smaller. So you don't want it super small to start with. So here's some I've already done. And I'm going to draw one and show you how to do it here. So here's the folded edge. So I'm just gonna do this. Uh, I'm gonna create a bottom. And again, I do it this way where I'm going and re-emphasizing the line over and over. I don't just draw it once. I'm kind of, I keep doing it and darkening it until I see something I like. You know, and if I didn't like that arc or that line, I could go and say, oh, I don't like that. Then I'm gonna come farther out. I want it more fat. Now I wanna come in like this. Yeah, and I'm gonna leave this one wider. I'm gonna flare it up and then make a nice lip treatment here. And again, also with your lip treatment, you don't want it really thin. Give yourself enough to material on the top. Okay, so it's folded in half. So there's where I'm gonna go with this. Now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'll begin to cut. Okay. When you're doing radiuses using scissors, always use the portion of the scissors near the back and rotate the material slowly as you're moving the scissors slowly. And that's how you will get nice, crisp, clean cuts with a pair of scissors. You have more control closer to where your hands are than the tip of the scissors. Okay, so I'm just following this arc. And again, for this assignment, you need three soft slab vases, one vertical, and it'd be your choice to do a pouch vase and one of these or two of these and one pouch or two pouches but absolutely you need there is a nice vase shape so we have that and uh, for the sake of demonstration i think i'm gonna do let's see here so many choices look at the shapes so these are kind of fun uh, you can make them in sets they make a great gift I'm thinking, um, I like this big one. I need two of these. I'm gonna go with the big one, okay? So next step, I'm gonna need a slab. So here we go. There's the one I'm gonna use. <clears throat> okay. So this was a whole bag of clay uh, when I started with the soft slab vase. And um, this project will consume, I'd say at least three quarters of a bag doing all three bases and if you get the hang of it and want to do more I encourage that again I will fire everything you make 
So here's the slab of clay I'm going to use. All right, I'll put this back. Okay, again, as you guys get better at this, you get more consistent. Again, just trying to get a uniform thickness before I start stretching. So again, here we go. Hold it out and pull it towards you, okay? Flip it. Okay. I'm going to go lengthwise here. Stretch some more. I got a lot of material on this edge. So, starting to get those little wings. And I'll check my pattern. Do I have height? Yes. Now I need enough for two of these. So I'm going to stretch it this way. It's always good to check. Check your material. Check your pattern. And see if you're close. How are we doing here? I can do one and another, and I still have to roll it. So <clears throat> I had a few creases on the backs, on the bottom of this, so now is a good time. Just check, I'm ready to roll this out. Again, wood sticks have them a little, a good fingers uh, thickness away from the edge of your clay. Always start from the center of your slab and work in one direction. And work back this way. So this project, you're going to need two halves, the vase form cut out twice, and then a small piece for the bottom, and maybe you might even want to make some handles. So I think I might make handles for this shape. We'll see. All right. So there, I got a decent uniform thickness piece of clay. Um, before I start cutting, I want to free the clay from the fabric. And check the back side here. Not bad. Okay, so I'm gonna start cutting out the pattern. Look at that, a Nighthawk vase there. So this is where you wanna take your time and be accurate. And uh, better to rotate the material. Let me get a Lazy Susan here. I'm gonna rotate the material instead of rotating my arm. And cut this out twice. And you want to hold the knife vertical. You don't want any undercuts right now. Just hold the knife perpendicular to the surface of the table, the clay you're cutting. Go slow. Try to be accurate. Clay is a pretty forgiving material when it's uh, wet. You can make adjustments, fix your mistakes. When it's dry, it's not so forgiving. So I'm just checking to see I'm in the picture here. And just take your time. Enjoy the process, because ceramics is a process. And, um, you know, it has its moments of spontaneity, and then there's other times you'll be making something where you gotta be highly accurate and focused. And this material can be all of that. Find out the way you like to work and express yourself with this material. So I'm just gonna, these are little pieces I'm gonna pull away. So there's one. I'll do one more. So I wouldn't just yank this, right? I want little escape hatches here. So I'm gonna pull that. If I was to pull this, I could cause distortion on my lip. I'll free that up. We might use these as handles. So I'll put this bigger stuff off to the side and do one more. And I think this spare area here will be more than enough for me to create my bottom.
these vases um, have a very small bottom and can be kind of unstable. So be careful when you have it drying. And, uh, you know, you don't want to have it on a wobbly surface where you bump it and the thing falls over. So it's going to be important that we have a wide enough base for stability uh, and it's level. And the surface that you rest it on is stable and level. You shouldn't have too many problems with it. I have several of these at my house that I have made, some quite large. The largest one I've made using this technique, about three feet tall. And uh, it was just a gigantic slab and the same technique. So you can scale this up to a quite large technique, or large vase rather, using this technique. There. And I did free up my clay before I cut out my patterns. So you want to make sure whenever you roll out a slab, you want to lift it up off the surface and make sure it's not stuck. Because if um, you don't, in some instances, if, you, if I didn't free it up before, as I was to peel this, this whole pattern would stretch. So we want to keep the integrity, the shape of this the same. That means we want to handle it really carefully. It makes me a little bit of room here. Lift this one up gently. Give me a little bit of room. Take that piece off. Now, the concept here, and I will demo it quickly, is we're gonna take a piece of clay, and I don't think I need this right now. Okay, here we go. Um, this is what we're gonna be doing. And I'm going to use this piece as a demonstration piece. Uh, my in camera. Let me move this over a little bit. Okay, so I'm in camera. I'm going to cut this piece directly in half and show you the concept real quickly. I want to put both of these pieces together in my vase. And this would be the edge of the vase. And I'm going to stretch it out. But see how these two ends are like this? Two flat sides. This is the concept we're going to do. We're going to take the knife. And we're going to come here like this. Let me see if it's visible. Yep. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to cut a bevel. And I'm removing this much on this edge. See how I trim that to a bevel? I'm going to do the same to this edge. So I'll explain what it's going to, how it's going to go together. So I cut bevel edges on both sides. Now when I put the two edges together, can you see how I can seam it together and I don't have two ang that makes a nice crisp angle there. This is what we're going for versus just taking two ends like this and trying to squish them together. We want to keep a nice crisp edge. So there's the concept and let me just start cutting. Let me stretch this back out over here. So as I do this, well, I don't do it to the bottom. I only do it to the sides and not the top, okay? So I'm gonna come here like this. And I'm, I wanna be careful that I don't cut into this top surface. So, and I can go quite steep of an angle. Just make sure you don't cut into that top surface. You can be a 16th below it. Just take your time. Yeah. Oh, let's see, take that out. We'll flip them over and get access to them. I better use the lazy scissor again. Make life easy. I get a better angle of my cutting here. But it's better to rotate the work than it is to rotate yourself. 
And if you have a working surface that you can move around easily, it just makes working easier. These are kind of fun. They're challenging, but um, unique shapes and very, again, very fast, faster than the coil vase for sure. So, okay. So now the next one. I don't know how much in camera we're going to get here. You can, um, you know, if you want, roll out the slab, cut out your patterns, and let them sit, depending on how warm your house is. Or if you do it outside, you know, with a Santa Ana condition, heck, yesterday it was like 94 degrees uh, in November. So pay attention to the weather or the, the conditions in your home. And you can just leave it and let it firm up a little bit, make it easier to cut. Um, but whatever works. I'm gonna do this all in one, one videotape here. So you can see I'm leaving about a sixteenth of an inch from the top surface of the slab. bit of a ding here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to be flipping one of these over. And again, if you were going to use your stamps, you could impart stamp texture before you cut out your, put the stamp texture and then cut out your pattern and then do the bevel. Okay, so this is the bottom piece, or the back side for now. And this will be the top side. I need to flip them both over so I can score them. Again, be careful so they don't stretch on you. Look at that silhouette of a vase right there. I'll put it in the same direction. You just don't want to distort them. That's good. So you can see the bevel cuts, and that's what we're going for. Bevel cuts on every surface except the bottom and the very top. Now, I'm going to be scoring these. My clay is kind of wet right now, so I'm not going to add any water, but I am going to take the time to just score. And again, you want to score, follow the contour, and just score in a linear fashion. This is the best way to do this. And we'll get prepped, ready to assemble. You know, and for the time it takes to, to score something, that little bit of extra precaution you take, making sure your pieces don't fall apart, uh, it takes very little time and um, guarantees your success rate. So that's why I say always, you know, take your time to do that scoring. And one th less thing you have to worry about having a handle fall off or uh, an attachment you did, another decoration, a um, sprig, or a heck, a whole piece. It takes very little effort to do this and guarantees a good success rate. Now that I'm having this almost done, I'm going to make my bottom. And uh, there's not a... How 
I say, there's different ways to approach it. I've cut a pattern out for the bottom. It doesn't always work. I Now I just generally kind of wing it, so to speak. So I'll show you what I'm going to do here. And let me move this up. I should, I'm moving these too much. Uh, if I had a larger surface area to work with, um, I would have them, I wouldn't move them at all. Okay. So here's a piece of clay for our base, and I need to make a bottom for our piece. So essentially, what it's going to be, it's going to be an arcing shape. And um, heck, I'm just going to use this right here, this silhouette uh, of this piece, and do that once. Let's see what we got. Not bad. So I'm just going to take this scrap. This is what my base piece is going to look like. There's the line, and it's kind of big. I will trim it down. I usually just eye it all the way, but you can use a subtle round shape. So here it is, and you can see, let me get this to a position that relates better to the form. So here's what we want, and now I need to trim this down. So I'm just going to follow this. I'm going to trim this one, this one, okay. So I put that on the inside edge, and I rock it, and I put a mark. So we need to come like this. And you can see how small the bottom is going to become here. So from that edge to this edge. tapered and let's see that's pretty close so it's almost like a teardrop shape in both ends okay this is going to be attached on both pieces here so I'm going to score this now of these pieces on the edge so you can see what this is the bottom it's gonna be like a perfume bottle as far as uh, the base very small um, the ones I have displayed in my home uh, we have what's called museum putty we have them in a grouping and they look really good the museum putty holds them down so we have this now the next step is we're gonna need some newspaper so we're going to need two pieces of newspaper. Um, I will make this one the bottom, and this will be the top. So I'm going to cut this in half. This is a whole sheet of newspaper. I'm just going to tear in half, and I'm going to crumple it up, unwind it, and then I'm just going to gently roll it into a tube. Crunching it up makes it a little bit more fluffy than versus just rolling it up like this. So I'll do this first, and then open it back up. Okay, so we have a bottom piece. Let's move this stuff. I'll try to turn this. So now, what I'm gonna do, this is the bottom piece, and I'm just gently gonna lift this edge up and we're just trying to get it tapered. See how it's kind of up at an angle? You see that there like that? That's what we're going for. Mostly we want it for the shoulder of the piece. That's the part that's going to be, we want it kind of, I'm gonna bring this back up like that. And this is just to hold it in place while we put it together. So there's one, you don't wanna have it flat and put it together, you'll just have a flat vase that won't stand, okay? So the same on this side. And again, handle it carefully so you're not distorting your shape. Do it carefully. And you'll have a chance to work on it better. That's it, 
might not be precise or exact, but we'll have a chance to make the shape better, okay? So there we go. This keeps moving. Look at this technique. I'm going to take a piece of clay. It's just temporary. We're just going to hold that there like that so it doesn't move on me. Now I'm ready to put this on top. This is kind of rounded and this is flat. So I'm going to need some support on the inside. So I'm going to take a sheet of newspaper, maybe two. And I'm going to do this here. I'm going to fold it. I have two sheets of newspaper and it's folded in half. And I'm just going to tear long strips. Okay. Just like this, tearing strips of newspaper. Try to get them long and thin. Okay, long and thin if you can. Yeah, I think that's going to be enough. So now what I want to do is I want to fluff this up. Okay, see how it's all fluffed up? And now we're going to use this. And don't worry, the newspaper will burn away when it's fired. So, and I want to put that in here. I don't want to pack it too tight. I just want enough for support, okay? So we're not stuffing a pinata, a pinata with full of stuff, okay? And we just want to support the body of the vase right now. And I think that's going to be pretty good right there. Maybe a little bit more. And this stuff's stringing out. We'll have to get all of this paper inside the perimeter edge of the clay. So and I got a little technique for that. Okay. So I like to use a little bit of water. And I'm just going to wet kind of like your hair. You wake up in the morning and you get these unruly hairs that won't behave. A little bit of water will tame it down. We're doing the same with this paper. So we want the paper inside that seam. And let's do this edge. I might have put a little too much. We'll see. Okay. I think that's going to work. Okay, so I'm going to take our bottom piece. I've already scored. I'm going to put a little water. And I'm going to score one more time. And put that bottom piece in there. That's how it's going. You notice this point, this point connects on both edges. If it's too big, you'll it won't fit, okay? Your, your vase won't put, be put together. All right, now the water's starting to work with the newspaper. I have that gentle support. And now I'm gonna to top it. So let's do this. A Little bit of water on the perimeter edges. This is gonna make it sticky and I'll be able to put it together. Now, like I said, the largest one I did of this, of these technique was about three feet tall and about two and a half feet across. And I had a lot firmer clay and I had help in assembling and lifting it. And there's techniques you can do using sticks to put it together. So now we're going to take, this is the bottom, we're going to put the top piece on. And again, be careful, don't distort. And we can also blow this up with a little air to get the shape if necessary. So now the next step we're going to do, I don't want to get in the picture here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to bring these points, the seams together. So I'm not pinching very hard. I'm just trying to get, make contact and I'm still trying to keep this edge. Look at this. I'm still trying to keep this edge elevated off the table. That's important. If, if it turns flat, it's gonna look like an empanada or something. It's gonna be flat on one side and puffy on the other, and you don't want that. So you kind of bring the bottom up to the top slab, 
And uh, I'd say this is probably the most difficult of the soft slab vases that we have for this project. And um, some people like a challenge and will attempt it. Some will be successful and some will need another shot at it. So don't beat yourself up about it. If you want to try it again, work small at first. Okay, I'm going to deal with this once I stand it up. So at this stage, before I stand it up, I want to make sure that I have my bottom blended and it won't shift on me. Okay. So let's see here. I get my, I'll get the rusty rib of work. And I'm going to work this surface. See what I'm doing? I'm just making sure the bottom is sealed before I stand it up. And I'm going to move to a smaller work surface. Let me get a bat. Okay, so I'm going to transfer it from my big uh, board I make my slabs with. And I'm going to stand it up. And give me a second. I'm going to relocate this board here. All right, so here we are with our vase form. Let me see if we can get a good shot at that. Whoa, that's what it wants to do. Uh, it's kind of soft right now, so let me um, finish putting it together. And at the top, I'm going to put my finger in here, all right, to keep that opening. And that's when you get it sealed, we can fill it full of air. Oh, what I didn't do is I didn't blow dry it, and that's what I should have did. So, it's been a couple of years since I made one of these. But once I get this sealed, we will fill it up with air. And again, clay is a pretty forgiving material, so we should be able to recover from this no problem. There we go. So let me move the camera. You can see the whole shape. So there's the slab vase form. I would have probably uh, better would have been to uh, blow dry it, cut out the shape, um, and blow dried it and got a little bit firmer. My clay here was soft. Let me get into the camera for a second. I'm going to turn the blow dryer on for a couple of minutes, and uh, I'm going to spend about four to five minutes to clean this up, okay? So bear with me. One more time. Air is escaping. But you get the idea. So there is my foreshortened vase. And it needs a little bit more work. But hopefully you get good contrast here. And here it is on a knife edge. All right, so this is how wide it is. Again, I didn't blow dry this before I assembled and that's what I would do, okay? So I'm probably gonna make another one and another video, but I'm gonna post this one first. Um, this is uh, a fun project 
and uh, great when you do a whole design set of several of them. So four shortened slab vase, demonstration. And that's it for this one.